What's up everybody? Today I am showcasing a really awesome category to collect. I don't know if you have heard about these or not, but these are signed video game art prints. I think these are really cool. These are underfollowed. These are under the radar and you can get these at really decent prices and they're just so much fun to collect and display. I'm going to show you exactly how I display my signed video game art prints in my binder system here. And while I'm at it, I've got a few binders where I keep art prints and a number of other paper collectibles that are larger than trading cards that I keep in this binder system. So while I've got my binders out, I'm also going to share some other interesting items that I keep in these binders other than art prints. So we're starting off here. I got my Sonic the Hedgehog art print. And the, I usually get these in 8x10 or 8x11 if you want to keep them in this binder system. And this one is signed. I'm not sure if this is the actor from the newest movies or one of the video game uh, character actors, voice actors. Uh, I just kind of pulled these out. So I don't remember what it said in the listing, but I, you can get either one. They have different actors for different characters a lot of times. And what you want to look for is these little authentication stickers here, either by JSA or Beckett. I think PSA does some prints as well. So you can look out for those also. I don't know. I'm not familiar with other certification companies. But JSA is one of those, like, uh, in the art print world, you see a lot of certifications by that person who does uh, signature authentication. Uh, I'm not familiar with them in the trading card world, but they are uh, do seem to be legitimate alongside Beckett in this world. So here's my Sonic one here. Now, these prints are really great uh, to get if you are collecting on a budget. By and large, these things go for like between $30 and $100, I would say. A lot of these average around like $50 to $75, something like that. It just depends, I think, like if the movie is hot. Like I think I might have gotten these when Sonic or Sonic 2, the live action movies, had come out. And uh, yeah, they're just, you know, you don't see a whole lot of them on the market now. You see some other ones. I don't think you can see, I don't I think I've seen the Tails ones, but there are a few of the other Sonic ones. And if you want to wait, maybe when the hype from the movie goes down, you can maybe get a little bit of a discount. But there's Tails. And then you can see here on the back is where I put the certificate. So they have a sticker on the front and on the back, they have this certification number that you can go and verify uh, that this was signed by that person. And I guess they do these at conventions and maybe some card shops or collectible shops show up and get a few signed and then take them home to their shop and put them online. And I guess they have JSA or Beckett either there or maybe they send these in to get authentication. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Uh, here's a really cool one. I like this one because it had Sonic and Tails in it, but the signature is of Tails. And that one seems to be a little bit harder to get than Sonic. I mean, it makes sense for Sonic being the mainline character there. So that's a really cool scene. And again, I haven't seen a whole lot of the Tails ones, uh, I feel like, on the secondary market. Sonic Boom, this is one that I thought was really interesting. Really cool uh, TV show. It's got the whole cast of characters there. So there are a lot of different interesting options. You know, you can go for your favorite character from a show. Um, you can go for a, a side character, someone maybe a little bit less followed. You could just kind of pick up the mainline person. And they are just a lot of fun to collect. And uh, especially because they're not super expensive and they display really well in these binders. Again, later I'm going to tell you the exact materials that I use. Um, the sleeves, the backing boards uh, uh, to store these and to take them out and look at them. So here, this one's really cool. We got silver. Uh, you can get different inks too. Like people would do different colored pens and things. So that's kind of neat. They use the silver ink here to match the character. So that might be something more interesting than, you know, your standard black ink. And this one is a Beckett one. So you see how they have the Beckett stamp there, the sticker. And then as we flip this over, we see that we have the Beckett certificate here on the back. Here's another silver one that has the regular black ink there. So when you get these, they usually come in a big top loader, and I like to take them out and put them in these sleeves. I mean, they're perfectly safe in those top loaders, uh, but this is just the ideal way, I think, to take them out. And you can kind of flip through them and really enjoy them. Uh, keep them in whatever order you want. Keep them in one place, and they're easy to flip through. So here's another silver one with that silver ink. Now, these are great uh, items, especially if you're doing some treasure hunting on eBay. So, you know, put in signed, authenticated, 
print and then put in just your favorite keyword for whatever franchise that you like, whatever character you like. And there might just be one of these out there. Make sure you get one with a certificate um, that you can go after. So it's a lot of fun to see what's out there at different times. Now I'm gonna show you some Zelda ones. I got some uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild ones. And unfortunately I got them in the wrong size. So I like to get them in these eight by tens. These are, I think, ideal for this binder system. And the ones I got were 11 by 14. So I'm gonna show those to you right now. And then I'm gonna come right back to this binder. And I've got a few of these binders that have some additional things inside that are really interesting. Here's just a preview right here. We have a Sonic 3D Blast. I think this is a postcard if you flip it over on the back. And this is a vintage item. There were two of these a seller was selling and I picked them both up. So I put another one on the other side there. And basically any kind of flat paper collectible that's bigger than a trading card you can use in this system. So let's check out those uh, Legend of Zelda 11 by 14 prints now. So I didn't look that closely at these on the listing. I had just assumed they were going to be 11 by 10, 11 by 14 uh, art prints. I'm going to move this light over the way here because I'm not sure if you're getting a little glare from that. But these are uh, actually 11 by 14. So these are not going to fit in that binder system. But I got quite a few. These are really cool. And actually, I only saw one 8x10, so I am, I am making an offer on that one. Uh, it's on eBay. At, as of the making of this video, I've made an offer on it. Uh, it was a little bit higher than even these 11 14 by 14 ones were, so I'm not sure if I'm going to pay up for that one or not or just uh, enjoy these. But again, these are uh, Princess Zelda from Breath of the Wild. Patricia Somerset is the voice actress, and she signs it, Princess Zelda, with some hearts here. Really cool item. Again, I thought this was going to be an 8x10. So I was going to be able to put it in my binder with my other ones, but it's a little bit bigger. I'm going to have to figure out a, another storage solution to display these. You know, you could always just get them framed. I try to uh, really avoid doing like a cheap frame from like Walmart or Target, though, for something like this with signatures on them, uh, particularly because sometimes they can touch that plexiglass depending on what quality frame you buy. And that can mess with the signature or smear the ink. So what I'm going to do is maybe look into some kind of artist portfolio like art student students carry around to carry their artwork you could put this in one of those kinds of portfolios um, or look for i'm sure they have some kind of collectible storage uh, binder for large size prints like 11 by 14. so here's another really nice one I like the gold on that and then there's uh looks like this uh breath of the wild uh, language there They're like sheikah language i guess you would call it or i don't know what the exact name for that is and here's another one here and I actually have another one of these coming in from like an anime con. I forget exactly what it's called. Um, and it doesn't have a JSA or Beckett. These do, you can see down here in the corner. We have Beckett, Beckett. These are all Beckett uh, signed ones. Let's see on the back here. And yeah, they have the certificate inside. Uh, you can find some other ones too. Like sometimes at these anime expos or anime cons, they have like their own sort of proprietary authentication system that I think is okay. They're, you know, they'll say, you know, do not remove this hologram or if it's un not authentic. I don't know how uh, well those kinds of systems will, will hold up over time in terms of people trusting them versus the Beckett or JSA ones. But, you know, I thought it was a, a cool pickup and would be nice with my collection of these signed uh, uh, prints. So here's another one of those. All right, so we got a little crack on the top loader up there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, right there. Uh, not a big deal. It doesn't look like it affected the print at all, but they these are the top loaders they typically come in and ship in. So take these out, put them in a binder, a sleeve, or some kind of portfolio. All right, those are my prints. I'm going to share with you some other interesting items from my binders. So like I was saying, this system is awesome for collecting any kind of paper collectible, flat collectible that is over the size of a trading card. So postcards are a great example. You don't have to get like a postcard specific uh, notebook or anything. You just use these magazine sized sleeves with backing boards, put them in a three ring binder and you're good to go. So here, I don't know if y'all remember these, these MetaZoo postcards from a long time ago. I have two of every single one of these that they ever produced. And I was a little bit nervous because I thought, man, they're going to keep making these and making these and I'm going to be buying all of them. And they did eventually stop. So here's some of my MetaZoo postcards. And uh, the Yokai ones are in a different binder. I'm not going to take those out. I think the, some of these are from Yokai, but the most recent ones anyways, or, or at least I don't know if they're the most recent ones. 
Uh, but at least some of my ones are in another binder. So I'll, I'm just going to flip through these real quick. I'm not going to take those other ones out. You get the picture. You can stick kind of oddball items in here. Like this is a Thrawn poster from Star Wars that came with the Thrawn book, one of the hardcover books, like special edition or something. I mean, something like that. You don't know what to do with it. You're not ready to frame it yet. It's getting in the way of storage. You just have it in a stack somewhere. I mean, you can just stick it in one of these sleeves and boards. Here we have a large size advertisement. You know, something like this is not quite a postcard. It's like just a big thing that they would hand out uh, with the game or something or to advertise it. I don't know. You know, most people probably just trash this kind of thing, but you can stick it in uh, one of these sleeves. I keep crazy stuff in some of these. Like this is just, you know, if you have a card or commemorative coin or something that comes in one of these licensed uh, envelopes and you're like, well, do I throw the envelope away? How do I store it? You, know, you can stick this in there. Here's a Tenchi Muyo coin uh, envelope for one of those commemorative coins. Here's a like a DVD registration card, I believe. Um, you know, are you on the Pioneer anime mailing list? You can put th that in there. I mean, there's just no no limit to what you can put in this as a really nice storage solution for a lot of interesting things like a DVD uh, placard or index card here for Tenshi Muyo. If you got a vintage booster pack that you've opened or something and you're not, and you feel kind of weird, you know, if you're like me, you're like, do I really want to throw this away? Couldn't this trash be collectible? And you're not sure, just, you know, you can stick it in one of these two. Now, some of you might like this if you like to keep some of your deck boxes, but they take up space. You can actually flatten those. Check this out. And then you can lay them flat and put them in these backing boards. I do like to keep postcards in the system as well. So I have some interesting video game postcards in here uh, that I picked up from Yahoo Japan Auctions. And I, I guess they make specific um, postcard books for display, but this just works so easily for me, this system. I just have one series of materials that I buy and I put literally everything bigger than a trading card, but not larger than 11 by 14 can just go right in this binder. You've got some cool Xena Saga trading cards. I, I buy a lot of really odd like postcards or other kinds of trading cards from Yahoo Japan auctions. Uh, stickers, check this out. So we have a Quest 64 I guess this came with the Quest 64 game. Maybe they sent you like, a lot of times they send you these registration or warranty cards or what have you. And uh, I would guess that this came with the Quest 64 game. But these are things you can just buy on their own and collect. You know, people will put up registration cards and things like that from games. And they make interesting collecting uh, collector's items on their own as well. If you're not, you know, you don't want to deal with the manual and the game and the box and all of that. These are really cool to collect and display also. Here's a thank you note from Therese Nielsen from Magic the Gathering. Great artist. I bought some signed artist prints from her website. She sent me this nice postcard thanking me for my support. This is a Burning Rangers mouse pad. Yeah, that's one of those items. It's like, where do I put this? And it fits, you know, it's a little bit thicker, but it does fit in these sleeves. Some more oddball items. Here's some vintage Digimon stickers, you know, a, a throwaway like starter deck, uh, Pokemon rule book. Just kind of threw that in there. Here's a Digimon one. If you don't know what to do with folded posters that you haven't gotten around to framing or hanging, you can put them in here as a safe place to keep them folded up. Got a, a more just oddball stuff in here. I do like a lot of vintage postcards. One day I'll take these out and do just a postcard episode, but I'm just kind of showing you these in their, their binder system. We've got Fantasy Star Online vintage. There's Final Fantasy. These are some kind of magazine, Edge magazine, uh, collectible postcards that came with those. So let's close out with just some interesting vintage postcards. Then I'm going to show you the materials that I buy to use this binder system. So we've got some, uh, looks like old Nintendo postcards. We've got Mario, this is 2006, Happy New Year Kirby. Fantasy Star Online. This is one of my favorite JRPGs of all time, Lost Odyssey. There's a, this one was released 2008. So I would assume these postcards are from that time. I don't know if these, I guess these would be like a pre-order item. I'm not sure exactly how one got these cards here, but they're really cool and haven't really seen them too often. They've got all the, the cast of characters here from Lost Odyssey, Valkyrie Profile 2. Again, I'll do a whole postcard episode one day and just kind of share my whole collection. Valkyrie Profile 2, Samaria. I've got a, looks like a set of these as well. 
Now, don't be afraid if you're looking for more space in these, you want to display more things, use the back side as well. I usually reserve that for those Beckett or JSA certificates, but you can certainly just put another postcard there. Also, got some dust in there. Here's the postcard holder. Here's a close up of one of those postcards. Thought I'd take one out for fun here and uh, get some light on that guy. Come on. There we go. So there's Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Happy St. Valentine's Day 2014. Pretty cool item. A lot of cool stuff out there like this, guys, that there's not a lot of attention on, not a lot of hype around. A lot of interesting stuff. If you're willing to go down the rabbit hole, do a lot of keyword searches, you can find these items. All right, so if you all want to store and display your paper collectibles that are larger than a trading card, but are not larger than 11 by 14, what you're going to need is any three ring binder. It doesn't need to be a D shaped uh, binder. It doesn't really matter for these because it's not going to impact. It's not going to touch the edge of your items. These are what I use for the sleeves. These are ultra pro platinum series. So I just kind of pay up for the best ones <clears throat> that I can get. You want to get acid free, of course. And these are the eight and a half by 11. These fit uh, really snug with these standard binders. And then just get the matching backing boards. Again, acid-free is a key thing to think about there. This is an awesome system. I do have several binders that I use this exact system for. And it's just, you don't have to think about it. You get anything bigger than the trading card. It's paper, it's flat. Um, you know, you saw I even have a mouse pad in one of those. So it could be other things that are just flat items that you don't know how to store. You can just stick them in there, take them out when you want and flip through them, enjoy them, share them with others. And it's just a great system. So these are what I go for. Guys, if you all have any questions about any of these items, uh, the system that I use to store them, let me know in the comments below. And I want to hear your thoughts on those signed video game art prints. Do you all think those are cool items? And uh, do you have any, do you think there's any spec speculative potential with those? That'd be interesting to hear if anyone has any of those. I think they're just great in things to enjoy. And I wouldn't really worry about the money aspect of them. They're pretty inexpensive. They're a great category to just collect on a budget. And they're really enjoyable. All right, thanks so much for watching, everyone. And I'll see you all next time. Thank you.